been a great show at the uh, Prairie Village Police Department for tour stop number three on our Back the Blue tour here on KCMO Talk Radio, now on 95.7 FM. And as we uh, hit the 9 o'clock hour, we're very happy to welcome on and say good morning to uh, Petlin Quanshaw. She is the communications supervisor here at the Prairie Village uh, Police Department. And, uh, Petlin, this is your second week on the job, right? Yes, sir. Newly hired, so So still trying to get used to to everything here boy they really threw you into the fire here i don't know if you drew the short straw or something but uh they said hey you got to do a radio interview in week two on the job well, you know i'm always up for the challenge oh that's great so you came from lenexa correct yes sir and what were you doing over there i was a communications dispatcher uh, so anything from answering the phones uh to dispatching police to calls for service um, running people, items that type of stuff okay so now you come over here to prairie village um just Take me through kind of, you know, you've been in the Johnson County area for, I guess, four years now. You were in Florida prior to that. Yes, sir. So what are some of the things that that you've noticed and you've been dealing with uh, when it comes to Johnson County dispatching issues that maybe there's been an uptick on, whether it's property or anything along those lines? Um, Well, it's nothing different than what I experienced um, outside of living in Kansas. Property crimes are up all over the nation right now, and, you know, every police department I've had contact with is experiencing the same thing. So they're, they're really trying to find a way to crack down on so it. So you did this in Florida, too? Yes. Okay. Yes, I was a dispatcher for 13 years there. Okay. So what about uh, things that we can be doing that people don't think about? I mean, you know, we, leaving stuff in the car, keys in the car. I mean, uh, you know, we want to be trustworthy people, but it seems like it's a time where we can't necessarily be that way right now. So what what is your experience on that? Um, you know, and like I said, this is a nationwide yeah, uh, yeah, issue where exactly. people have, you know, they want to believe that they can they can trust the public. Um, but we're doing as much as we can to educate them about being a little safer with their items, not leaving their doors lo- uh, unlocked, making sure they take valuables out of the vehicle, um, sticking them under seats, that type of stuff. It's still visible. Mm. Um, so don't give don't give the criminals a reason to get in your car more than you need to. So. When you decided to come to Prairie Village, what um, what was that like? Why did you want to take this job and be a part of this department? Um, I've always had aspirations of being more than um, than a dispatcher. Uh, so I made 17 years total in the public safety field a few weeks ago. Um, and of those 17 years, it was always spent um, helping the public because mm-hmm. um, that is my passion. But I wanted to move on to helping my team and what I can do to support them and their roles to make their everyday tasks a little bit easier as well. Um, public safety and all can be stressful, mm-hmm. um, and I've seen it firsthand. I've, I've lived it, so my goal is to make their life a little bit easier. You know, I think about what you just said there, and when we think about um, you know mental well-being of uh, law enforcement, first responders, we don't really think about the dispatcher side, but you're the one, when people are at their potentially worst moments in their lives, you're the first person they talk to, uh, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, so yes, sir. So what is that? I mean, you are literally the first person that they communicate with when they need law enforcement. So what is what is that like for you? I'm sure you've heard some pretty traumatic things throughout your 17 years doing this. Yeah, it's um, it, it definitely takes a special person to do what we do being able to leave it on the table and go home and try to live a normal life. Uh, Mm -hmm. It takes practice, but coming back every day and knowing that I can help someone when they need it worse. I mean, for the most part, no one's calling the police because they're having a great day. Mm -hmm. They're calling us because they're having their worst day typically. So being able to calm them down and give them some hope and give them what they think they need that would help make their day a little bit better is what fuels me to keep coming in here and helping the public. What is, uh, cause you clearly have a very good demeanor for this. I can tell. So when you're Thank trying you. to calm people down and, uh, relax them during what is one of the worst moments of their lives, likely, what is that like? What do you do? Well, you know, I just remind them that making the call is the first step in getting the help that they need, whatever that may be. Sometimes they don't actually need a police officer. Maybe they just need, you know, someone to listen to them. So being a dispatcher requires us to to wear different hats. We can be a mentor, Mm -hmm. a teacher, uh, just someone to lend an ear to. Psychologist, it seems like. You You know, know, therapist. Unofficially. Unofficially, of course. Unofficially, you know, we're that, that person to help get them to what they actually need. Because if, you know, if they did know, they may not be reaching out to us in the first place. So just making them understand that calling us is the first step in making those right decisions 
is what's helpful. Um, but that also takes practice. How much of of those calls are actually people who don't need police? I mean, if they're people that just needed in a year, I don't know. I don't know what they needed, but I didn't realize that was part of the case. So how much, how frequent is that? Um, a good majority of our calls warrant um, officer responses. There are those that don't, but you know, that's, that's also part of our job. We've, we've got to help the public. Um, we, we've got to give them what, what they need. It, it may not always be what they think they need, but mm-hmm. we'll get them to where they need to go. Is there a story, and I don't want to put you on the spot here, but is there a story that really sticks out to you over the years that's either, you know, something totally out of left field or just something that, you know, maybe people wouldn't think of you getting a call about or for? Um, well, there's several. <laughs> there's uh, we several. got time, so <laughs> the floor is yours. Um, I think the probably the funniest – I shouldn't say funny because it was an emergency to them. Um, but I did receive a 911 call from a from a gentleman who was upset that his neighbor was cutting his grass. Um, and it was an, an emergency to him. We He asked for the police and we're not going to deny him. So we did the best we could to kind of help, kind of help calm him down. And I tried my best to let him think about all the good things that were coming out of this that at least he didn't have to do it um <laughs> i wish somebody would cut my grass i'm not I, calling the I, cops I was, yeah, i'm was, saying cut away is you <laughs> and th- this was a call i received in florida so if you've ever been to florida it's hot yeah no one wants to do it so i would have been grateful myself um but he didn't see it that way so we sent him someone to try to help him get his day in order. Now, hold on. Was it because the guy didn't w- w- was cutting grass he didn't know wasn't his? Or was it because this neighbor thought this guy's grass was too long, so he cut it himself? I think it was a little of both. Oh, okay. um, And it was just – he was – the gentleman that called was just someone – who you can't ever make happy no matter what you do. He was he was one of those. So yeah. uh, he, he wasn't happy with me trying to find the positives in the situation either. <laughs> as much Jeez. as I was trying, he was just one of those people. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. that's what we're there for also. Wow. But we settled it and everyone was happy at the end of the day. And that's what we're tra- that's what our goal was. That's exactly right. Jeez. I send that neighbor in Florida out to Johnson County. That's some lawns. That I, I need him to pick up my leaves, too, while he's at it. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, so uh, Petlin Quanshaw is here. She is the uh, communications supervisor at the Prairie Village uh, Police Department. She's now two weeks on the job. So, I mean, you're only two weeks into this. You're still, I know, drinking from the fire hose and all that kind of stuff. But what's something that you want to see uh, implemented, changed? I mean, as you now take over this new role, what does it uh, look like for you? How do you want to see that improve? Well, I, you know, I'm very fortunate that this department was ran very well before I took this role. Um, so I don't have anything right off the top that needs to be changed. Um, what I've always strived for throughout my career is to just bring awareness to what dispatch does. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't always get the exposure that our, uh, you know, our patrol counterparts get. Um, we're more the behind the scenes, so it would be nice to just have more community outreach to to show them what we do. That we're, you know, there's this um, this mentality that we just answer phones. But there's so much more that goes into our jobs that are it, – it's just as stressful as wearing a badge. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping to, to make the community more aware of what we do and our part in the organization. And you guys are a little short-staffed too. I mean this is not yeah. unique to just the, 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 uh, the cops on the streets, but, you know, you guys are short-staffed too. So yeah. you got to figure that out. Yeah. Um, our uh, recruiting team is doing a great job of bringing in applicants. Um, and I also cover records and uh, property as well. Those are integral parts of our our organization also, and they need the exposure as well Mm -hmm. um, because they are a very important part of this agency. We're one of the higher liability divisions um, between dispatch records and property. So I'm hoping to to bring that to the forefront while I'm here in this position. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, Petlin, thank you so much for being here on KCMO. We appreciate the time. Thank you for having me. Petlin Quanshaw, she is the uh, communications supervisor at the Prairie Village Police Department. Back the blue here, uh, tour stop number three continues on KCMO Talk Radio, 95.7 FM.